Hi, and welcome to Bits of Blender. I'm here with my boy Richard. Hello. I'm going to do a quick tip on the always sensor. In 2.5. All right, let's switch over to game logic. I'm going to rearrange the screen a little bit. We can drag that over there. Move our text here. I'm going to select the one that they already made for us. And I'm going to turn on the colored syntax and the line numbers. Then I'm going to let's move this over here. Mouse wheel in. And what I'm going to do is create the always sensor and then I'm going to create a Python script to show some values of the sensor. And I'll connect them by dragging that line over. I like those little lines. It's kind of cool to drag them. <laughs> yeah. So first thing I'll do is I'll get a reference to the controller. Then I'm going to get a reference to the sensor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out a little message whether that sensor is sending a positive pulse. Or is the sensor and uh, was the sensor triggered? It might sound redundant, but I can't type and talk. <laughs> but a sensor can be triggered in sending a negative pulse, also. So I'm going to look at both of those values, whether the sensor was triggered, and whether what the state of that sensor is. Each sensor can have an internal state of uh, either positive, well, either true or false, zero or one. And that's not to be confused with these, these states here. I'm also going to get our console window over here. I'm just going to drag this down so that we can see the output to it. And when we drag this, when we run this, to run the game engine, we press P. P for play. And then I'll hit escape to stop it. And you'll see that we've got some output over here. Positive was true, and triggered was true. So when you have the always sensor on, it sends an initial pulse that's positive, that's true, to the controller. Now, you've got this button here that if you click it, what it'll do is it will send, as long as the internal state of this sensor is true, it will send a uh, pulse for every frame. The default is 60 frames per second, so it will send 60 frames, 60 pulses per second. Whoa. That's a lot. Yes. Now, this next button will send a pulse every time, every frame, while the internal state is negative. So we press P, and it's, it sends the initial pulse that's positive, uh, but we don't get any more pulses because the internal state of that sensor never changed to negative. If it did, then it would be sending pulse, 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 pulse. Now, let's switch back to this one. We can also specify the frequency for these things. Instead of having it being sent every uh, frame, you could have it send, you know, a delay of one one frame. Uh, or we could say, let's say 20, and then I'll hit play. And you'll see the pulses come much slower. Right. It's not like it's more like. Dun, dun, dun. So it's like every other frame. 
No, in this case, we're, we're well, oh. you know, like every 20. Oh, yeah. So, you can also uh, click on tap, and that will send a negative pulse after a positive pulse. So if I click on that and press play, you're not seeing anything right now because it's sending all positives. So let me turn that off for a second. And you'll see that it's triggered a positive and then it, it sends a negative pulse. So it, the sensor like goes on and then off real quick. Cool. Now if we increase the frequency here and we had this tap on, let me click that, then you see it's alternating. Mm. On off, on off, on off. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Level is it will send a pulse. It's not really applicable, I don't think, for the always sensor. Uh, it will send always send an initial pulse. So you would use this level button like if you uh, were using the keyboard sensor, for example, and you wanted to make sure that it sent an initial pulse, whether the key was pressed or not, when you transition between states. Right. And then you've got this to invert the value. So, for example, here, the, the, the state of the always sensor is positive. So this is not going to send a pulse. But if we invert it, wow. you'll see that it's, the value is it's sending a negative or a zero value, and uh, even though it's triggered. So that's pretty cool. It is. And that's the always sensor in Blender. 2.5. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing I'm going to show you, which, which may have confused you if you ever tried this. Let's say we have a simple motion, uh, and we want to rotate it. And I'm going to add just a, an AND here and pass through this value. So I'll connect that up here. And I'll drag it over. And as I sh and I'll turn that off and I'll set that back to zero. And the always sensor in its initial state is going to do what? It's going to send one pulse, right. right? And it's going to be positive. So you might think that I'm going to have this rotate around the z-axis. We're looking down it. So what do you think is going to happen when it gets this pulse? It's going to send the pulse to the controller, to the AND one, and then it's going to send that positive pulse over here. Right. So what's going to happen? It's going to rotate, right? Yeah. Well, actually, and it's going to keep rotating. Right. And that might surprise you because you're only getting one pulse. You're not getting pulse, 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 pulse. Right. So why does it keep rotating? Well, that happens to be the, the actuator, the motion actuator. Once you send it a positive pulse, it turns it on and it starts running. And it's going to stay running until you send it a negative pulse. Oh, that's smart. So, for example, if we turn the tap on, which a negative pulse will follow a positive pulse, watch when I hit play. So there we just, it just turned boop, a tiny bit. It was just like, just a tiny just one, you know, probably uh, this value here. <laughs> <laughs> just that amount, whatever yep. that is. <laughs> yep. So, that's the always sensor. Bye. See you next time.